Oh, well, hey guys, I'm looking a little crazy today. Um, I need a haircut in the worst possible way. It's been a year and a half since I've actually had a real sit down in the beautician's chair haircut and I need it. And I'm just kind of done with messing with it anymore. And most days I just wash it and then just let it air dry and this is air dried and I kind of just don't care. <laughs> so um, my little buddy is here. You want to come sit with mama? I like it. Okay, you stay right there. So today I thought I would do a favorites video. I have never done a favorites video and I've been kind of watching them a lot more recently because, um, I don't know, I've just been finding some really good suggestions in people's favorite videos. I think sometimes I would watch like beauty gurus uh, favorites and that just isn't even remotely in my budget to buy all this high-end makeup. And so I kind of had stopped watching favorites videos for a while until just recently. And I started to get back into it because I was watching realistic people. <laughs> uh, people that I could actually like be friends with and hang out with and who maybe have a budget kind of similar to my in my lap. Yes. Okay. Um, Say hi. He needs a haircut hi. too big time so i went to go cut his hair the other day had him all set up and the clippers are broken so little buddy won't sit for um anyone to cut his hair will you yeah oh you will okay okay so first uh i just i kind of wrote a random list here on my phone of some things that i'm loving first we'll talk about some house things i am loving faux flowers right now just loving it so I have very neutral decor. You've probably seen it. Lots of white and blacks and um, gray and kind of linen sort of uh, colors. Ugh, but spring, oh my gosh, y'all, I love color. I love it. I love to wear lots of color, but having it in my home, at one point I did have a lot of color in it and I hated it. Like my kitchen was red. Um, my living room, we painted a like spring green color. I had navy curtains. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I realized very quickly that I did not like a whole lot of color in my home. And a lot of that has to stem with, I love to wear color. I'm not wearing a whole lot today, but um, I love to wear color. So I feel like I need neutral in my life, in my home to like quiet things down. But Maybe you can see this little table right here um, was something that I just painted the other day and I painted it AG in blue from Martha Stewart. This was a dumpster diving piece. I picked up, it was sitting next to the dumpster one day when I was uh, getting our mail and I was like, yes, you are mine. Uh, and it was maroon and I had planned to paint it black. Black would be perfect in my kitchen, but I grew wild hair and I decided to paint it blue. And while it's taken a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of time to get used Bye, to, me. just because I, it's taken a little teeny bit of time to get used to because I uh, love neutral so much. Um, yeah, this little guy is distracting me so much. Anyways, so the blue of my table and faux flowers. I am loving faux flowers. Now, admittedly, I have two bundles that are white, <laughs> but um, I'm loving these pink tulips that I picked up from Michael's and I think they're so beautiful. I'm planning on going back and getting more. Okay, so next, the thing that I am loving for beauty items is this honey hand cream. So I literally have healed my very dry hands with this hand cream, no joke. I spent all winter long with really, really sore dry hands and they had thick, scaly, dry patches on them. They were broken, cracked, bleeding the whole nine yards. They were awful. And I went to a craft show that um, we hold twice a year here in our town. And I had been really kind of looking more into the benefits of honey just in general, especially raw honey, royal jelly, things like that. Um, and so I looked up a couple of the vendors because I knew that they usually had like vendors who deal dealt with um, honey products and things of that nature. And I went and I picked up this face cream, and I loved the face cream. Um, it, I think it's 
been doing pretty good things for my skin. But when I was there, I was talking to the guy a lot about honey and the different benefits and how one day I would love to be a beekeeper. And he said, sorry, I think I just, I thought I deleted my note. <laughs> he said, here, put this in your purse. And I was like, what? And it was the sample tube of that he was using for hand cream. He's like, oh yeah, it's just a sample. Don't worry about it. Here you go. And he's like, it's half used anyways. Well, it wasn't half used. I just got to the craft show like a couple hours after it had started. And I used that cream that first night and my hands felt so much better. And I used it the next day and the next day after that. And since then, I've not struggled with dry hands at all. It has like been incredible. I mean, they look a little haggard because my hands just look haggard. But um, I had like right here, you can kind of see the darkness. This was all dry patch right in here. You can kind of see the darkness. All dry, like hard, thick, dry skin. So disgusting, so disgusting. But this cream, I'm telling you, healed my hands. And I'm actually going to email the company and tell them, listen, this is amazing. And I love this stuff. So Sunsea came out with a new catalog. Yay. March 1st and if you are new to my channel I was with Scentsy for almost five years I was a director earned a few different trips with them and actually went to headquarters for a director training big deal I had a really large team loved my business but um just felt like I needed to do something different in this kind of my salon. okay no nobody in this phase of life um anyways I am a Scentsy addict. You probably see the warmers all over my home in my videos. Love it. And um, so I got together with some friends the other night and smelled the new scent. And I am loving Southern Sweet Tea. It is so good. In fact, I'm pretty much loving all of the new scents. I'll see if I can make a list somewhere here on the screen so that you can see some of my new favorites. Um, there's a lot of stuff that returned that I do love, but these are the new ones that I'm loving. And I'm also loving this pineapple warmer. Oh my gosh. I I love pineapples, love them, and love them long before they became sort of a thing. Um, in colonial times, pump, er, pumpkins, pineapples meant welcome, and I just love the sentiment of that. Oh my goodness, my son. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. This is just my crazy life. We, he's giving up a nap, um, and so my quiet time of filming videos is kind of out the window. Okay, so. Um... <clears throat> So my favorite book, I kind of mentioned that we are doing, oh, this hair, this hair, okay. So I kind of mentioned that we are baby stepping our way through to a more natural lifestyle with natural products and more real foods. Okay. Um, and I have been loving this book, Little House Living. And I read it from cover to cover. I absolutely love it. And actually tonight I'm hoping to pick up some uh, different products from our natural food store to make some of the recipes within there, like um, for like body butter and I don't know, some different things. I need to figure out which ones that I want to do. But her book is broken down so that there are recipes on DIY beauty products, cleaners, um, food uh, products like made from scratch cooking and different things of that nature and it is wonderful her book is just beautiful I love the way that she speaks in it and the really fun thing about this book is that I wanted it for my birthday and um, I didn't get it for my birthday I got a whole bunch of other amazing things um, so I was at the bookstore one day and I had every intent and purpose to go buy this book but it was $30 Canadian and I just couldn't I couldn't just like kind of swing the idea of uh, dropping $30 on a book. <laughs> so I have to just randomly text my husband and I said, oh, I'm at Chapters, the bookstore. Um, and I, I just love it here. He and I love to go to bookstores. Um, and he's like, oh, he's like, I'm here too. Where are you? So I told him where I was at. Well, I didn't know it, but he specifically went there to buy that book for me, and he surprised it to with he surprised me with it later, and it was like just even now it just it was just the sweetest thing. My love language is uh, receiving gifts. That's how I receive love the most, and so that just meant the world. So, anyways, it's a really fantastic book. Um, I think her name's Melissa Arnick. Um, she has a blog. 
and she has a couple videos to actually here on YouTube. They're a bit older, but um, anyways, can't recommend that book enough. Okay, so I got to tell you about some movies that I have been watching lately, my, my hubby and I. Okay, so first we'll start with, um, let me tell you a TV series that <laughs> I've been like obsessed with, um, and that is The Waltons. My husband bought me the entire box set for Christmas. So it's like all the seasons plus all the made for TV movies and oh my sakes and stars y'all. I love it. I've taken a tiny bit of a break because we've been watching some movies together at night, um, my husband and I, but I think I'm on season six and <laughs> season six since Christmas. Like I just, the Waltons are such a wonderful TV family and I love them. I'm a little shocked though how much the kids pick on one another and how they get away with it. I would not be having that, but it is just a, f a fantastic show and it just makes you feel so good watching it. And um, so, yeah, highly recommend, highly recommend them. It's so good. So, movies. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I feel like I could talk forever on the movies that I've been loving. The first is called The Big Short. And this is with Ryan Gosling. Um, Michael Scott. Michael Scott? It's not Michael Scott. <laughs> oh my gosh. Steve Carell. Michael Scott is from The Office and I am a huge Office fan and I will forever associate Michael... Sorry, do it again. I will forever associate... Now I just want to call him Michael Scarn. Oh my gosh. Anybody an Office fan out there? I will forever associate Steve Carell with The Office. However, in this movie he does such a great job and okay so the big short is about the housing bubble that happens like in 2006 7 8 and prior to that um and it is like 98 percent real everything portrayed in this movie and what isn't real they do kind of tell you about it in the movie like they'll kind of do a side side thing and they'll say now this didn't quite happen this way and it has nothing to do with the actual events of the housing bubble um it is incredibly eye-opening incredibly eye-opening and i think it's a movie that everyone needs to watch like straight up um it is the last i keep saying to everybody because i keep recommending this movie the last two minutes of the movie are mind blowing and the last like 30 seconds of it has pretty much changed a whole lot of what we're doing around our house um, and in our life it is just crazy and it is crazy how bankers were allowed to get away with what they did and it is crazy the amount of people that were displaced from their homes and lost jobs and just everything um it's a uh, uh, it's the videos the movie's sort of done in not a comedic way because it's not funny stuff that they're dealing with but they do have bits of comedic um, rest so that you can kind of laugh because it's so intense and heavy like that this actually happened and actually affected people like this isn't Hollywood making something up and the movie chronicles um, a few guys who knew that the housing bubble would burst in 2007, 2008 when interest rates rose um, and how they profited from it. It is just insane. And that's kind of all I can really say about it. You've got to watch it. Um, and I would encourage you to watch it with your significant other because it is just something that I think that everybody really just needs to watch. Um, and I was, one more thing I'll say about that is in 2000. 2005 it was or 2004 I'm sketchy on the dates I think it was 2005 I had um, moved home and I was going to go to dental assisting school and I was working full-time at the time I was a cashier at Walmart um, and I would need to drastically cut my hours at Walmart because my program was like Monday to Friday um, 7 a.m. to like five o'clock and I could really only work like a few hours a week and that wasn't going to cut it. So I went to the bank and I'm from a really tiny town, like we're a one horse town. Like we're known, like there's Amish around. We have hitching posts at the Walmart. Like 
It is a farming, dirty, blue-collar community. Um, that's what the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette called our town one year. <laughs> dirty, blue-collar. Um, and so I made an appointment at the bank, our small town bank that I'd always done my banking at. I mean, the bank manager was this girl that I went to high school with. She was in my course class. It was her husband, and he was a year above me in school. Like, it was just small. And I applied for this personal loan. It was a small loan, like $5,000, and I they I couldn't get it. Um, and instead, he offered me a mortgage. He said, you know, if you were looking to buy a house, we could guarantee you a mortgage, and it would be for this amount of money. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, you would let me borrow like $100,000 for a house, but you won't let me borrow $5,000 to go to school. I ended up going to school, I graduated, and it was all great, and I never did anything with my dental assisting because I hated working in people's mouths. Terrible, I know. Um, and then I got married and moved to Canada, and I would have to do a whole lot of training to update my credentials and blah, blah, blah. So never really pursued anything with that, but I know all about dental assisting. So anyways, the big short. And the second movie that we have been just crazy about is The People vs. OJ. Um, I was in eighth grade when the whole OJ Simpson trial happened. And when they uh, announced the verdict, I was sitting in, um, what class? I don't even remember what it was called, but it was like, I think it was like world history or history or like geography. It was some class like that. Uh, and they turned on on the news and we watched like the verdict being delivered and I remember I was babysitting the night of the Bronco chase and I remember watching it on TV it was like an evening because they were in California and it was night and I was watching the Bronco chase on TV and so my husband and I watched the um, HBO movie uh, The People vs. OJ and it has like David Schwimmer in it um, who else Cuba Gooding Jr. plays OJ it is just, uh, John Travolta, I think, produces it. He also plays Bob Shapiro. It is a phenomenal movie. It's just really, really, really good. But that got us going into um, OJ Made in America, and that was another special that ESPN did. And it's a several-part series, and it just chronicles all of the things that were happening in the, um, Los Angeles prior to the murders, prior prior to everything kind of unfolding and happening and what made OJ who he was today. There's interviews with his friends, um, people who knew him like really, really well, like at various points of his life. It's his agent, like, I mean, it just is eye-opening and it's shocking. It's shocking to see how he got the verdict that he did of not guilty um, and the way that the trial unfolded, especially knowing all of this backstory now and it's nuts. So if you want, <laughs> if you want a movie that like you and whoever, like your significant other want to sit and like just hash about oh, I'm dying, the whole O.J. Simpson thing, it's crazy and it's really sad because at the end of the day, like Two people were so brutally murdered and their deaths have not been, no one's ever served time for them. Uh, and so that's just, it's tragic is what it is, but it's shocking just how he got away with murder. It's terrible. So anyways, um, uh, last thing that I will tell you about is a YouTube channel that I have been really loving and it's kind of something totally different from what I feel like maybe people would think I'd watch or what I feel like I would watch and it's a homesteading channel and it is from Esther Emery and oh my I have been enjoying her channel so much uh, so I first heard about Esther um, she wrote a book called when stars fall from the sky and an interview with her was on a podcast that I was listening to called the open door sisterhood and it was briefly mentioned in that that she had a YouTube channel. And of course, anytime we hear somebody having a YouTube channel, my ears perk up. And I had loved her interview. It was basically talking about how she lived this very fast-paced um, urban life in Boston and about how her and her husband basically turned their backs on that 
um, and moved to Idaho and started homesteading. And they lived in a yurt. Um, they carried water from a creek and it's their whole life around that. And I have just been diving into the homesteading community here on YouTube because it's fascinating to watch and there's so much that I would love to implement into our home and family as far as homesteading is concerned. I can never go off grid. Um, that's just not something for me, but it's been fascinating to watch just other people. It's just, I don't know, it's fascinating. Anyways, Esther has this um, series that she's doing called um, the Homemaking Skill of the Month Club. And so what she does is each month she takes a skill and then she brings in other YouTubers um, and other people within her community or even outside of her community uh, who are proficient at that skill. So one month it was um, cooking and so they taught how to make a bunch of different things and this month is gardening, so they've been going through all kinds of different gardening techniques, and um, I don't know, it's just been amazing and fascinating, and it's a really nice break from some of what I find filling up my subscription, not my subscription box, because I subscribe to like amazing people, but some of the suggested videos of here's the genre that you're in and here are all of these videos that we think you'd be interested in and it's just not where I'm at right now and so it's kind of really refreshing to look at something that's so very simple um, and not so produced and just simple living and simple life. Um, not easy by any means like carrying your own water and feeding your goats and like all of that isn't easy but it's just that simple sort of living that I have just been falling in love with and wanting to implement all the more in my own life so those are some favorites that I'm loving this month my voice is sounding really hoarse I need to go drink some water and my daughter will be home from school any minute now so those are my favorites I would love to know what some of your favorites are leave me a comment down below about any favorites that you have are wondering about so those are some of my favorites for March 2017. I would love to hear about what you're loving. Tell me movies, tell me books, tell me um, YouTube channels and makeup and house stuff, like whatever, whatever you're loving. I'd love to know because again, I have just been really loving these, um, these videos. So anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. I will talk to you soon. Bye.